ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're in a, a very unique electorate here. Obviously, you can see that it's, uh, it's, it's quite a beautiful spot. There are many other spots like this. I don't know if you, you get the chance to drive northwest up to Burnie. Um, no doubt there'll be a super fast charging station up there as the days go by. The uh, next speaker's probably going to make it happen, especially after these rousing addresses. One of the smartest men to ever serve the people of Tasmania is here today. His motto, Braddon, can be better. Please welcome the member for Braddon, Roger Jantz, the Parliamentary Secretary for Small Business, Trade and Red Tape Reduction. Roger. Thank you very much, John, for that um, expectation. And, uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you very much for having me here today. I'm, I'm here as a member for Braddon and as Parliamentary Secretary, as someone with, a, with, a, with an interest and a passion in um, technology and our responses to climate change as well. And I've served with some of you in different forums, been in the room with you, as we've dealt with some of those issues in the past, wearing different hats. Uh, but I'm also here representing our uh, Minister for the Environment, Elise Archer, our Minister for State Growth, uh, Peter Gutman, and his predecessor, Matthew Groom. Um, I'm also here representing our Minister for Health, um, Michael Ferguson, and our Minister for Tourism, uh, our Premier, Will Hodgman, uh, because the issues that are raised and that electric vehicles and sustainable use of energy raises cover all portfolios, uh, all part of parts of government, all parts of our community as well. So um, this is a hold of government representation you've got here and uh, a message that I'll take back to all portfolios of government um, from here. So uh, welcome to beautiful Brandon, uh, to lovely Devonport and this bend on this river which is the most distracting conference venue um, outside of Strawn, just quietly if you haven't done that one. Um, and uh, it's also important to acknowledge that people have been coming and sitting down and meeting here to talk about important things for tens of thousands of years. And uh, it's important that we acknowledge that uh, and pay our respects to uh, the first Tasmanians who've been doing that and their leaders uh, past, present and emerging as well. Uh, we're all new in that context. Uh, we're talking about new technology. I'm new to Tasmania as well. I've only been here for 18 years and we've realised that my wife and I, we came here too late ever to be considered locals. Uh, we came here from Western Australia and one of the things that happens when we have visitors uh, come from the mainland uh, to visit us, one of the things that they comment on that takes us a little by surprise is they turn on the cold water tap in our kitchen and the water's cold <laughs> and they remark on it. And they say, here, the cold water tap really means cold water. <laughs> and that's cool because we come from Western Australia and everything's like tepid at best. <laughs> and uh, in some ways, I think we're also <coughs> particularly considering your interest in being here, we're also a place that when you plug in, you get renewable energy. Um, this is something that Tasmania is doing better by the dint of its history and its geography um, and, and its policy than most other parts of Australia. And I think it's where uh, Tasmania and electric vehicles have something unique to offer each other and are a particularly good and interesting fit and how we manage that fit and its potential uh, is a challenge, that, a wonderful challenge for us all. That's obviously what you're here to discuss and what we as Tasmanians are here to learn uh, more about. Over 90% of Tasmania's electricity comes from on-island renewable sources right now already. Uh, we have a target of being self-sufficient in on-island generated renewable energy by 2022 and to achieve zero net emissions by 2050. Now, um, we're excited by that and particularly excited because it's not forever away. It, it's not high in the sky. It's, it's achievable, reasonable, feasible for us to be doing that. 
and uh, as you all know better than I and your other speakers will talk about um, the electric vehicle network and other things like uh, domestic battery storage in homes and things can be very much a part of making that system work and, and making the distribution, transmission and um, systems for all of that stable. So there's this unique proposition that Tasmania has for the electric vehicle industry and vice versa. In, to the point where, uh, where we talk about EVs here, um, maybe in Tasmania there are EVs, renewable energy vehicles or REVs. Maybe we can institute a new thing here and where's your REVs? Um, very exciting uh, and, and a very exciting business opportunity. Also a great, um, I think, reinforcement and match with our brand as a state uh, for um, the complementing the nature-based, clean, green, um, quality brand that uh, we have as a tourism destination for interstate business with their EVs, but also those coming from overseas as well to come here and hopefully one day hire an EV and get around in it. Um, so there's no doubting that Tasmania gets uh, and understands uh, electric vehicles and where they fit in our picture of ourselves. But the questions then are, how do we go about making it all happen? Uh, how do we go about making it all happen in the Tasmanian context, uh, in the Tasmanian demography, in the Tasmanian uh, politics and economy as well, uh, as a government helped sponsor this event uh, and a range of other actions that have been outlined in our Climate Action 21 strategy. So, what are we going to do as government? What are we doing already and committed to that will help to bring this picture into reality? Uh, first, and obviously we've set those targets regarding uh, further renewable energy capacity uh, on island here and self-sufficiency and uh, zero emissions. We are working now on enhanced production from our existing hydro facilities right across the state. Uh, we are investing and supporting other investors in the development of, of new major wind farms uh, on the island and projects currently uh, in development worth over $600 million there. You would have heard uh, that we're in discussion with the Prime Minister and the Federal Government regarding the prospects of pumped hydro and Tasmania being a uh, battery of the nation. Those, those conversations include the discussions around second bass straight interconnectors so that we're able to uh, trade more reliably uh, Tasmania's surplus renewable energy into the national grid and assist the rest of the nation with its aims to, um, to have greater renewable energy as well. So these are some of the things that are already underway in terms of that renewable energy capacity and the idea that when you turn the tap here, the energy that comes out is always renewable. We're also though very keen to see where electric vehicles fit and there is specific reference in our, in our uh, Climate Action 21 uh, strategy around this. It was one of the things that Matthew Groom, when he was Minister, was um, personally quite committed to. The approach that we've taken in that, as you will know, because some of you are on it, is to establish an electric vehicle uh, working group to give us detailed insights and intelligence into what our strategy might be immediately and longer term. And I'll just give you a picture of that, that what that working group is, what its, uh, some of its terms of reference are, and also who its members are. Um, so that working group that's been appointed and that met for the first time in October this year uh, will be asked to, uh, to identify opportunities to, to coordinate the rollout and the uptake of electric vehicles in Tasmania. Identifying barriers to electric vehicle uptake, we've seen the global picture here, but we also need to put a Tasmanian lens on that because there will be some dimensions of that that are quite different here because of our scale, because of our demography and other things compared to a national picture or international. Um, reviewing policy and regulatory settings, analysing the impact of electric vehicle uptake on our electricity sector, identifying priority areas of action to support electric vehicle uptake, ways to improve electric vehicle data collection, 
and assessing approaches to support the rollout of vehicle charging infrastructure in Tasmania. And the government's put $50,000 uh, to that group to assist its work and deli deliberations and uh, $2,000, $200,000 also uh, to support that first stage rollout of, uh, of the charging network here. And I understand that TAS Networks, uh, which is our state-owned transmission um, company, uh, is also uh, quarantined resources in the order of $250,000 also to support that rollout program in terms of how it affects um, TAS Networks' uh, own systems and so that it can uh, be a participant in making that work, at least for that initial uh, rollout. Now, one of the reasons for doing that, taking this approach, whilst there is lots of information already available and lots of priorities that have been identified elsewhere, we want to make sure that everybody who's going to be involved in making the long-term rollout of electric vehicles in Tasmania work is there involved on the ground floor. Not just the enthusiasts and the government and money. And so <coughs> around the table in that working group, and there are people, members of that working group who are here today, uh, there will be members from Aurora, which is our energy retailer, the University of Tasmania, the Royal Auto Club of Tasmania, Treasury. If you want to do anything, seriously invite Treasury. Don't, don't come late to Treasury. We'll get Treasury into the first meeting. The Tourism Industry Council of Tasmania, this fine organisation, the Australian Electrical Ve Electric Vehicle Association, <coughs> right off the back is, is a member of this working group. Sustainable Living Tasmania, the Department of Health and Human Services is in the working group, as is TAS Networks, the Department of State Growth, Hydro Tasmania, who generates uh, the power, and the Department of Premier and Cabinet as a sort of everything else um, involvement there, uh, so that we don't have missing links and we can take that back to, to the Premier uh, where there is going to be, uh, where we identify issues that aren't covered somehow by somebody's job that they've got already. And outside of that sort of terms of reference that I talked about and those specific issues about what charging points where and, and, and putting a Tasmanian lens on the challenges or barriers to uptake. I think one of the things that's very important for that group to work on is how do we, how do we see the potential of electric vehicles in Tasmania be realised involving people who don't have to get it we all here, us, the nerds, get it. We're, we're excited by the technology and the ethos and the possibility of this thing that we're interested in and our ability through what we do and buy and through our behaviour to make the world a better place. But there's 500,000 people out there. A lot of them have never bought a new car in their life and never going to. Uh, whose priorities for their daily living and their expenses and all the rest are driven by things other than their fascination with the possibilities of this technology. And politically, and probably this has changed since some of the previous discussions, I'm realising we've got to bring those people with us somehow. Yes, on one hand, by helping them understand the possibility and the benefits of all this, but on the other hand, by understanding what it is they need to get aboard and it might not be anything to do with the technology or what comes out of the exhaust pipe, but by how it solves other problems for them. And so I think that quite apart from where the green pins are on the map and who pays for them, and I see that Western Australia and other places who have got the Royal Auto Clubs and the, the Teslas and all sorts of other people are involved in making sure that charge points exist. But how do we get it from being novel to being normal that this is what we do, that we buy these vehicles, that people want them, that they can afford them, and that we gradually not just lead and coerce and incentivise, but just shift everybody slightly towards this as a new, more sustainable uh, 
way of moving people and things around our state. And maybe in that regard, Tasmania, with its small population, its huge resources, uh, and all of you clever people coming here to have conferences like this, we can actually be a place that gets that uh, most right more early than many other places uh, around the world. So the message I want to give you is that Tasmania's government gets this. We see that the opportunities here are different and in many ways far more prospective than many, many other jurisdictions who are on paper ahead of us in rolling things out. We want to get everybody who's got something to offer the effort in the room and in Tasmania, you can do that. <laughs> and we're listening keenly to you, to this conference, to that working group and we look forward to you helping us make a plan and agenda to realise the potential of EVs in Tasmania. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Roger. You're probably sick of receiving chocolates from strange men, but there you go. I can't move it at first.